Hi everyone, it is Tracy from the Mermaid Cove coming to you with cooking. <laughs> Trust me, somewhere in heaven, my mother is laughing. Now I'm a good cook, I am. She just was an excellent cook and loved it. Anyway, I'm here with my dad's famous borscht, borscht, beet soup. Um, so I started, I got stew meat. So whatever kind of meat, oh, oh, it's fogging up my, so whatever kind of meat, so I just, sauteed it in um, olive oil, and now I'm gonna add some salt and pepper. I'm gonna let that cook for a little bit, and then I am going to add beef broth with some water. Um, I cut up like a medium onion, and I do it in like bigger chunks, not fine. Then you're gonna let that cook, and then we're gonna add our beets. I probably will add two cans. We're gonna add um, sliced potatoes, and we're gonna add butter beans. So, and at the very end, and you're gonna add a little vinegar. So you're gonna need some vinegar, it doesn't matter what kind. And it calls for cabbage, and I, you know, I'm not gonna eat a big old cabbage, so this is pre-cut, so, and I don't add tons of it. My dad would add, like, probably a whole cabbage. So I am going to add just, you know, hands full of it. And all of this is basically, and some salt and pepper, my olive oil, all of it's basically what tastes good to you. At the very, now I don't add sour cream to the pot, I add it to my bowl. So when I'm making my bowl of borscht, I'm so excited, then I add a little bit of sour cream, which I will show you. Okay, so now I am going to put in the onion, I mean, the salt and pepper, onion, and beef broth, and water, and a tiny bit of vinegar. Okay, I will be back. Okay, guys, so I've let my onion soften up a little bit. And now I'm going to add this whole container of beef broth because I want to make a lot of soup. I will add water to it. When I add the beets, I will add the juice with the beets. I didn't want to waste any of that. And basically, it was like peasant farmer's soup that whatever they had, turnips, um, carrots, if you want to add tomato, whatever, I just kind of stick to what my father did. There was a few carrots in the cabbage, but he didn't add carrots. My mom did, but my dad didn't. So I'm going to add some water. I already did my salt and pepper. Don't do too much salt because, you know, you always have a lot of salt in here. So wait towards the end till you have to decide you need some more salt or not. Um, I don't add the vinegar kind of towards the end also. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to be cook this low and slow um, for about an hour. And then I'm going to add, um, you know, the beans, the potatoes opposite, and my beets. And then let that cook for a little bit. And then um, I actually, I'll probably add the vinegar at the same time, and you can add any vinegar, and that's what you do. It's so simple. Okay, um, I'm not sure about cooking stew meat. I did what I thought my father did, who knows? But when you cook it low and slow, it usually makes the meat more tender. So, okay, I'm gonna add my water and turn it down, cover it, and let it work its magic. Hey, I'm back with my soup. Here's my cat, Oscar, bothering me for food. Say hi, Oscar. Oscar, look up, Bubba. Bubba. Anyway, that's the cooperation I get. Okay, so my soup's been heating, just slowly absorbing all that onion flavor. But now, I am going to add two cans of beets. Now, it doesn't matter what kind, whatever. Sometimes I do like, uh, I'm going to do everything, all the juice. That's where the yumminess comes from. Sometimes I get whole ones. But normally I like, or mix it up. No beet will be left behind in that can. And then you have your potato, oh, butter beans, and I drain those. So I suppose they would probably taste good. My fresh cut potato, and again, you can use your own potatoes. So now we're gonna, I have one extra can in case I want some more beets or beet flavor. Look at all that yumminess. I will say that the meat is very tough. So I've got to learn how to make stew meat tender. 
I wanted to cut it up, but I just, I don't know, I would have never gotten this made if I had to cut it super small. Okay, so I turned up the heat to medium. I'm going to let all this um, kind of cook a little bit, like an hour, just on its own. Then I'm going to add vinegar. And I'm going to taste for salt and pepper. And then let it cook for an hour. And then I'm going to add my, my cabbage. And we'll go from there. Hey, guys. Okay. I forgot to film it, but this bottle was full. So that's how much I used in my borscht. I did add another can, added the extra can of beets and I added the other can of potatoes. So now I am going to turn it down to low, low and slow. Um, and I am going to put in a handful of the cabbage. Again, it's up to you. It just wouldn't be my dad's if I didn't add cabbage. So right now, there's two pounds of stew meat. There's three cans of sliced beets, two cans of sliced potatoes, one butter bean. If I had a butter bean, I would put it in there. Um, a little vinegar, salt and pepper, the beef broth, a whole container with water, salt and pepper, and now a handful of, and I just mean a handful, I might add a little more, just depends, but I tasted it divine. So I'm gonna turn it low, put my cabbage in, I'm gonna let it simmer for like another hour, taste it again, see if it needs any more zhuzhin, and then I am going to have a bowl, and I'm gonna put a little sour cream on, and I will show you. To back, so that's what I did. I put like two handfuls, maybe a, a cup and a half, two cups. And then you're gonna stir it in. And again, you don't have to, you can add a lot of cabbage. You can get your regular cabbage, I'm lazy cook. So if I can have it chopped for me, it makes it my life better. Okay. And again, on low and slow for about another hour. What's really good is it'll be so much better, not even just tomorrow, but on Saturday, Saturday and Sunday, oh my God, so good. Hey right, guys, woohoo! Look at that. I added just a splash more of the um, apple cider vinegar. I don't know. My dad's borscht tasted a certain way to me. You cannot skip the vinegar, though. It is, I think, the most important part of it. But I am so happy. Look at that. And of course you can use fresh beets, a combination, um, you know, and that cabbage is now almost translucent. So you're gonna get a hint of cabbage without all that hunks that I don't like. Though I do feel like it needs some butter beans. And sometimes what I do is it gets lower and lower. I'll add like a starter pot and I'll add like more beets and maybe more potatoes. So I don't have any, so I'm gonna have to eat this up, but I'm gonna freeze some too. Anyway, I'm gonna dish it up and I'm gonna show you. Uh, so I dished up all the, um, that part, and then I'm going to add, look at that. Woo, and I'm going to give myself a tiny bit more juice. Oh, my God. Now, some people have it cold. Some have it without meat. There's no right or wrong way. For me, it's just my dad's way. Okay, I'll be back with this sour cream. Okay, and now... Just a dollop of sour cream. I love this um, squeezable. It makes everything so much easier. I have my good Chinese soup bowl. So you do a little. Sorry, I'm terrible at filming. I gotta figure out a better way. Mmm. So good. Um, trying to figure out how to turn the camera. Okay. I did figure out how to turn the camera on me. My hair is crazy. I was laying down watching a webinar. Can't see me in terrible lighting, but anyway. My dad, I think my dad would be very proud of that borscht. Get your piece of beet. Oh my God. 
Now the the meat is a little bit chewy. Not too bad. Maybe it depends on the cut of meat too, all right? Oh my god, you guys. Um so good. You know me, hit me up. I'll be sharing my borscht with you. I'll make my nephew try it. He's coming over Sunday. Okay. Thank you guys. And um, this is going to be the first. I don't even feel like I'm looking at the camera. I don't know what to say here. Um, this is a hodgepodge. I'm going to try to get better at filming all this. But the first in a series of cooking. Cooking with Tracy. Anyway, borscht Darwin Johnson style. I hope you guys like it. I hope you try it. Any questions, feel free to email me. Um, I, maybe I can find a recipe a little bit like it and I'm on Pinterest and I have, I'm going to have a thing called YouTube recipes. So I'll see what I can do, but just, you can Google borscht and there's all, there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's just my dad's way. And, uh, this is crazy cause I'm not looking at the camera. I don't know what to say. All right. I'm going to go eat. Bon appetit, everyone. I, what are you, what's your family? heirloom recipe what is what do you make that makes you think of your childhood i'd love to hear that so please comment below thanks